Well, genetics, genetics, genetics. I just got some new ones from Seedsman. Big shout out to them. Discount code CLTV if you didn't know. They're the official bank of the crew here. Uh, much love. I got a bunch of really, really cool new stuff. I'm geeked up, but just like with the triploids, you want to keep these things around. And a lot of people will say, well, just clone it or self it or keep it around in that sense. But there's actually better ways to do it to preserve those genetics and to make sure that they're disease free and they're going to be resilient and stick around. Now, while there's a lot of different ways to achieve this, one of the best ways and one that a lot of people really don't talk about is tissue culture. Let's talk about it. This video is for educational purposes only, YouTube. Now a word from our sponsor. No, whether it be air control, air quality, lighting, or your tent itself, or the entire kit, AC Infinity has got you locked down and they continue to innovate time after time again with just amazing products. Now their products go very fast, well, because they're in high demand. Supply and demand is a real thing, and when you got a supply that's as great as this, you better jump on it quick. And when you do, make sure you use CLTV at checkout and you'll save some money on your order. Big shout out to AC Infinity, and let's get to the video. Now we got some very, very nice genetics right now. One that would probably be top of my list would be the GMO Kosher and the garlic butter. Both very funky, very dank, and I'm very excited to be popping those. But with those, I really don't have as much space that I used to to be able to maintain clones. And with that, the variety really doesn't kind of stay as consistent. Now there are ways that I'm learning to achieve this. Now one thing that I did in the commercial space that I saw a lot of people doing was tissue culture. Now in most situations in a commercial grow, this is done because they've got powdery mildew or uh, tobacco mosaic virus or haplatin viroid, some sort of issue that's going to potentially kill their whole crop or slowly but surely just suffocate it. So in that point, they're going to use it for disease prevention or disease eradication. Now there may be a variety of reasons why you'd want to do tissue culture for your propagation method, but what is tissue culture? It's science. Now tissue culture is a technique in microbiology and plant science where cells, tissue, or organs are grown and maintained in a controlled artificial environment. These processes usually involve the explant selection. Now this is a small piece of tissue, or the explant, which is taken from the plant. This can be a leaf, stem, root, or even just a single cell. Then sterilization. The explant is sterilized to remove any microorganisms, preventing contamination. Your growth medium. The explant is placed in a nutrient-rich growth media, which supplies all necessary nutrients and hormones for the growth. This medium often includes a gelling agent, kind of like agar. Then you have the incubation period. You have to place these inoculated cultures in a controlled environment with a suitable temperature, humidity, and light conditions. This environment is crucial for the growth and development of the explants. Periodically, one would have to transfer the growing tissues to fresh medium to ensure continued growth and to avoid nutrient depletion. Now, this step is often necessary for maintaining cell lines or for the multiplication of the tissue. Over time, the explant grows and differentiates into full plantlets. So the main advantages you're going to be looking at with tissue culture is, again, maintaining those genetics, but also maintaining disease-free genetics. Now, there's people who are running into different diseases for their plants left and right. This happens often in the commercial space, but it's also happening in the home growth space. What's crazy enough is you can even find some of these diseases in seeds, which is pretty fucked, right? That's why you need good banks like Seedsman. Otherwise, you may get something a little bit sketchy. So make sure you're doing it right and using discount code CLTV. But when you run into an issue like this, it can be detrimental to your garden, your overall growth, and it could potentially make it so you're throwing out these genetics. And that's really where it's a struggle. Now, even if you're growing something like a triploid, well, tissue culture could be your option. You don't necessarily need a laminate flow hood and all of the crazy accessories to be able to make this happen. Nowadays, people are doing it pretty simply, actually. But what is a laminar flow hood for those of you who are maybe balling a little bit more versus those who are balling on a budget? So this laminar flow hood essentially will take care of any contaminants or airborne contaminants that may affect your tissue culture. Now, in this case, they're a little bit more expensive and they are often used in labs, but some people are using them more at home, especially those who are dabbling in some... Uh, the mushroom. Now in this process, a single plant can produce thousands of explants, thousands, meaning that you can take one plant and keep this going way more than you could with a mother plant. You're not taking a cut that needs to be viable, that's gonna root, it's a whole different process. And it may seem a little bit more scientific and a little bit more non-natural to some, but this is science and there's a, a method to the madness. Now one thing that I have seen in comparison to clones that are taken from a mother plant would be the acclimatization of that actual cultivar. But when you're taking it from such a sterile and precious state and you're bringing it into your normal room, that transition can be a little bit rough. And sometimes hardening those plants off can take a little bit longer in comparison to taking a cut. But most oftentimes you're going to see pros and cons when it comes to things like this. But I feel like the pros do outweigh the cons here. 
Another thing that really stands out for me, at least that I really like, is that space constraint that you would deal with with clones, you don't deal with as much with tissue culture. Now again, these explants can be tiny little pieces of your plant compared to something like an aeroponic clone or a bubble clone or a dome in your tent. This is a lot smaller and it's a lot easier to maintain and you can scale this a lot easier in a sense. Now, of course, if you're having something like the laminar flow hood, your success rate's definitely gonna be better. But with sterilization and maintaining everything and proper maintenance, this can be really successful for a lot of people. And I'm actually starting to dive a little bit into tissue culture for myself, which is kind of what brings this topic up. Now, is this something that you do or something you've considered to do? Drop below in the comment section. I'm really interested in getting this conversation going. These are the evolutions of the plant that I'm interested in. This isn't something brand new, but it's new to some people. And I figure we may as well talk about it. Now, if you're looking for another subject that's a little bit newer a little bit more taboo check out this video right here and make sure that you go into it with an open mind because some people are a little bit skeptical on it and others are embracing it with open arms i'm excited for the future of this plant and i'm excited to share it with you so with that being said stay lifted peace